What is going on, people? David Durang here. This is a new podcast that I'm creating. It's called David on Standby, and I'll go more into that. But what I want to really show you right now, it's a group called Passport Heavy. Um, and the video that we're going to watch together, it's about um, Medellin, Colombia. That's That's what this particular video is about. And they're going to go through so much about um, what you expect to pay when you do certain activities from eating to um, ATVing, etc. So I don't want to spoil it, but the reason I wanted to show this is I just want people to get motivated to travel. I want people to kind of do their own research and find great resources out there. Um from people that has done it before them and just want people to be inspired and I hope to do a lot of videos on different people whether it's groups whether it's individuals that travel a lot so without further ado let's get this started let's see what Passport Heavy has to offer I was making $40,000 a year and I could live anywhere in the world. There's a couple places that shoot right to the top of my mind. That's either Medellin, Colombia or anywhere in Thailand because of the cost of living. All about first world living at third world prices. And what inspired this video... I've actually been to Medellin, Colombia years ago. Uh, my friend Eric and a bunch of his friends, they rented a house there and I just popped up on them and we had a good time. I was out with my boy OJ in New York at this nightclub called One Oak. And if you know anything about this place, it ain't cheap. And so we got a deal, right? We got a deal for 1500 and we came with two bottles. And I was like, shit, I ain't doing this anytime soon. And I started to think about, like, what does it cost to do, you know, a weekend in a city, right? If you're in L.A., if you're in Miami, if you're in Vegas. And I was like, yo, it's not cheap. If you're making 40000 you're going to be pouring this on credit cards or you're just going to be like, I'm saving for a couple of years for this trip. And so right now I live in beautiful Medellin, Colombia. Look at that skyline. And the skyline. doing a weekend right out here is on another planet. A flights down here are really easy, right? From Chicago, where I'm from, it's about 500 round trip and they have all of these different flash sales. Or if you leave from New York, I see 300 round trip. And that's like a... 300 round trip to Colombia from New York. I'm from New York. I got to check that out to validate that and to see when, what time of year that is. When I went to uh, Colombia, I think I paid like 150 working as an airline employee in first class. So that's a great value. In prices going to Miami, New York, or something similar. On the flip side, you have Thailand, which I really love, but you're looking at $1,000 plus, as well as a 24-hour flight. So that's where, you know, the big difference comes in. But I highly recommend Thailand. I couldn't recommend Thailand enough. You got the... Everybody, rec 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 the, everybody recommends Thailand. I've never heard somebody say they've been to Thailand and had a bad time. Um, it's actually from New York to Japan is roughly about 14 hours. Um, well, from the East Coast is roughly 14 hours. Then Japan to Thailand is about another six. So, yeah, it takes a long time to get there, but you have to go there. Mom's barking out here, but it's all good. Oof, oof. The major difference between Colombia and Thailand is you can walk more than four feet without running into a tourist. And I love tourists, but it's just more of a cultural experience, you know, without, you know, so many people catering to tourists right now. But people are not friendly out here. They're like, hola, como estas? And that's pretty much as far as my Spanish go. I need to improve it. Hola, mamacita. Hola, bonita. Hola. That's pretty much it. Hola. People are genuinely, um friendly people but you also do have to remember that some people say hello because they want something out of you but you know keep it cool and keep it moving tourism down here hasn't completely taken off because they still have that negative perception of that it's a whole basically overrun by narcos but that could not be the furthest thing from the truth it's such an ignorant point of view and so i just want to take you around with me here for the next few days so you can see what's possible here if you come down here for a weekend my specific little neighborhood here is called san lucas poblado it's one of the most exclusive neighborhoods here in the country what i want to do is just kind of take you around my crib right now so you can 
find out you know how much does it cost for a crib like this Stay. if you want to come pay attention it through airbnb so this is five thousand square feet five bedrooms plus a major quarters which is like a real bedroom and it has a very open floor plan you know great for entertaining when my friends are over everyone can be in different places of the crib so this place is 10 million pesos a month which is equivalent to about thirty four hundred dollars us and then i also pay my electricity and internet bill which is about four hundred dollars so you're looking at about thirty eight hundred a month for living expenses here something equivalent if i had like a six month lease in like chelsea in new york for this size place it'd probably be somewhere around thirty thousand a month if you're coming down just for a weekend right something like this would be about four hundred dollars um a night through airbnb and then if you're not doing the airbnb option you know they've got hotels Super here nice. which you know are really cool anywhere from seven to like 140 bucks a night and they come with like breakfast yeah and great location they have cheaper really places safe. than that too and one of the things that you can do too is use something like hotwire and ebay so you can pretty much cut that uh price in half to like 50 dollars a night or 40 dollars a night and but if you're not familiar how to use that i wrote a whole blog post you'll see the link in the description where i describe you know how to take advantage of that and now let's talk about taking care of the crib right we need someone to help because one of the things that we do is we work and work out a lot at home it's time to work out man i got some fitness goals so my brother is the leader in the house when it comes to this fitness stuff abnormal fitness I'm trying to get more like him he's my inspiration like for real for real when it comes to this game and i gotta like just being real i want to have a six pack like my brother mm -hmm. and uh so i gotta put in this work when you in those hot climates it's easier to go out and be active you know but yeah so uh, i really like the game that they're kicking right now about you know the options of you know getting an apartment or whatever or a hotel so stay tuned you know it's good information finishing up this workout One of the things that's really important for us is that we eat right. And so I have basically a third mom down here, and her name is Martha. And she's just amazing. She does it all here. I don't know how my life would function without her, literally. Because minimum wage is $650,000 um, a month here, that's what most service workers get here. But, you know, Martha does such an amazing job for us. You know, I pay her, you know, a million a month. And, but that is equal to, I think, about $300, maybe $350 a month U.S. And she comes... I think that's one of the cool things when you go away and you have, like, someone... Like you hire a cook or somebody to clean, um, you help the economy, you help the people, and generally Americans usually give more than a typical native would, because the native would just pay people their normal rate. But if American comes over and to them it's so cheap, and we're so uh, used to tipping a lot, so generally we'll give them more money, and it it helps people out, you know, and then you. You know, you can tell other people about this wonderful lady and stuff like that, word of mouth. So, it's really good. You know, five days a week, you know, she comes at 9 a.m. and she leaves at 5, you know, every single day. And if you had something comparable, you know, in New York, you'd be looking at like four or 5,000, you know, a month. But I'm leaving here on August 26th. So one of the things is Martha is not coming with me. So if you need, you know, an amazing woman, I couldn't recommend Martha enough. You know, my assistant, uh, just basically, you'll see an email address here, info at passportheavy.com. I'm, I'm so slow, I don't even know what the, oh, my own assistant's email is. <laughs> Get in contact with her and she'll uh, direct you to uh, Martha if you want to do that. This food's so good. I, you can always count on Martha to have a good meal out here never fails i work online i have an online marketing company so i get to you know experience you know the great benefits of you know making u.s dollars but spending in uh in pesos what a major key that is for you to be somewhere work remote and and be able to spend your american dollar in other places it's something that i wish to do in the future the very near future and i also know people that actually do it um, a friend of mine, my, my, my boy George, his friend lives in Bulgaria and he's been there for over, uh, I'll say like, I want to say going on four years now. 
he works over there. He 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 still works for a co- a company or two here, and still makes American dollar and living it living it up in Bulgaria. How can it stay in your Airbnb or your hotel the entire time? There's so many amazing activities to do out here. And one of my favorite places is a place called Mahalo's. I was actually just Googling the best view in Medellin, and this spot came up for food and sunset views. But when we got there, we found out there was so much more to do than just eat and have a drink. They had paintballing. They had, like, dirt bikes. It's basically it's an action sports spot. So we went back the next day. You get 200 rounds of balls and light their ass up. We're ready for battle. They bomb. Paintball is so fun. And folks, that is not how you roll. Let me try. <laughs> they got like this flower game, and then they got food too. And I was like, wow, and that's per person, fifty-five thousand pesos. And then also, while we're on the topic of extreme sports, this was probably my favorite thing to do while I was here in Medellin. It was flyboarding in this spot called Guadalupe. It was about a two-hour car ride from here. Oh, I've, I've seen people do flyboarding. I got to build up the courage. The one recommendation that I have, make sure you get a helmet on because if you go up high like me and come down wrong, you might just get knocked out. <laughs> but 15 minutes on here is uh, 90,000 pesos, which is about 30 bucks. And then in New York, it's $100 for uh, 15 minutes. And you might- I don't, I'm from New York. I don't know where these people fly aboard. I hope it's not in the East River or... The, the Henry Hudson. <laughs> Wondering how am I getting all these prices from New York? I simply just did a Google search and I was like, all right, what does it cost to do here in New York? So everything that you hear me talking about, I just Googled it and saw what the exact price was for the top number one ranked uh, place for paintballing or if it was uh, flyboarding or whatever activity it is that I'm talking about. If you know anything about me, if you've seen my videos before, you know the boy loves to jump on the ATVs, get muddy, get messy. And so there's this place called Medellin and Ven- I don't know what is it about us guys. We love doing uh, motorsports. I only been on an ATV once, which is weird. I did it in Mexico like two years ago or about two years ago. But um, last year or year and a half ago, I went to Aruba and rented a uh, rented a motorcycle from a place called George. Um, and it was amazing. I went around the whole island. I have footage of it and everything, but it was a real good time. We, I got to do it more often when I travel. And they don't just have ATVs. They've got mountain bikes. Anything extreme, they have it. And so this was one of my favorite activities. I forgot the price off the top of my head, but you'll see that thing flash across the screen right here. And if you're anything like me, I definitely know you like to eat. The boy be eating. That's why I got to work out. So there's this spot real close to Mahalo's, one of the best views in the city. It's called La Mahoria. As soon as you walk into La Mahoria, you can just see that this place is world class. They got all these animals. I don't even know what the hell the name. You know the one with the like the one like the long neck, and it's like no, nah, no. Nah. The horses are doing like what the f- type trick. They're like, and I'm like, I don't even know how they be doing that, bro. But it's crazy. The food there is, I mean, it's amazing. I had the whole squad out. I had some of my friends visiting from all over. I mean, everyone just came out, and we went in appetizers. You know, a couple entrees. And the whole meal came to about 500,000 pesos, which is like 150, 160 dollars. Something similar. If that was mm. in New York for 10 people. For 10 for people? Caliber, Amazing. Like, you're looking at like seven, eight hundred, maybe a thousand bucks. For That's that for two meal. couples. We went in, we had drinks. I mean, it could be that like, amount. Oh, 10 people? Wow. My bank account would be hurt if I was trying this in New York or Miami. Say you don't want to go all fancy. You're not bougie. You're just like, yo, let me get a burrito. I'm chill. I just want to get some food. And I would say a typical meal here in Colombia right now with the exchange rate is like for a decent nice place it's like five six bucks per person and so it's so affordable Woo! about to get it in i got my 30th birthday coming up so the inspiration to get in shape is higher than ever and being here in colombia you see uh, speaking about that i have to head out to the gym after this that's why i'm still in this stuff you're gonna want to take it to the next level right now it's about mid 
July. My birthday is September 24th. So we're going to see if I put up or I'm just all talk. Or I'm about to get it in here at the body tech. Let's get it. So I went there and for a whole month, uh, it cost about 220000 Wow, 70 a month in Colombia? actually cheaper than like the rest of the I remember Texas when the gyms... I remember when the gyms here used to be about 70 to 100 a month. So that's about 75 bucks uh, a month. And you know the boy got to stay fresh for the little hair that I got left, right? I headed over to Swaggerific or Swag, I forgot the name. But I know they got something to do with Swag. And they'll get you cut up and beard, hair, everything for 15,000 pesos, which is $4.89. You know how I know? Because I was on Snapchat today and I was talking about it. I went on XE. I was like, yo, I'm at the barber shop. 15,000 is... I went to XE. $4.89. I believe it because... I've got my hair cut in like Panama and in Indonesia and in Guatemala. G haircuts, and my father got his hair cut in like the Philippines. But generally speaking, on average, haircuts around the world is like three bucks, three American dollars, two American dollars. It's crazy. You know what that is in New York? Man, I was in Manhattan, man, visiting my boy Brandon. We are doing some work. And I just went across the street. And he's like, 35 bucks. I was like, 35 bucks? Who? What? Like, my hair? 35? But even in, in like my hood, I'd be paying 20 bucks, 25 bucks. I, I'm smashing my hands. I'm so upset when I'm thinking about the prices that I'd be paying. Getting around out here is mad easy. The 15 minute Uber, like around the city, is like two, three bucks. Something comparable in New York, you're looking at, you know, 15, 20 bucks for a uh, 15 minute Uber. That just shows you how cheap Uber is here. And now the helicopters, it's 220000 per person. You might be sure. Damn, $75 a person? Well, that's not bad. Six, Especially for the experience of being in a helicopter. And one of the things that I would recommend is if you can take a chopper, like if your budget allows, because it's one of the more expensive things, I think it's like close to 4 million pesos uh, to take a chopper from Medellin to Guadalupe. But then if you get to do it and go around the rock, and it's only about 45 minute ride, I mean, it's just an amazing amazing experience and so look at that amazing look at that amazing view like wouldn't that motivate you to want to go places this is crazy you want to relax a little bit i know the boy does so one of the things i do is enjoy private massages and no no happy endings i know she looks beautiful but now we don't get down like that for a full hour you're looking at like ninety thousand pesos for an hour she comes to your crib and i actually had a two hour so i paid you know 180,000 and plus gave her a tip and what I'll do if you want to get a massage from Melissa, she's the homie, she's mad cool. You'll see her information. You'll see a link in the description for a blog post. I'm gonna have see, that's what I'm trying to do. The same way, well, this is the reason for this podcast and, and uh, the reason I'm writing my book and just trying to share information because um, we're, supposed to make, we're supposed to make it easier for each other. This guy had a cook. He had a masseuse. That did great service for him. And then he's in the comment section uh, listing these people. Um, not only does it help people like us on the receiving end, but it helps those individuals to be able to support and help their family. So it's it's everybody wins in this scenario. Everything laid out. Cause I always get a bunch of questions. Oh, where was that place? What was the address? Don't worry. Everything's in the link, link in the description on PassportHeavy.com. So I'm going to bring it full circle. I started with what inspired this video, Nightlife. And I was like, man, I ain't doing that no more. My bank account don't like this. But out here, you know, if you're getting a table in a top spot, you're looking at like six hundred to 800000 for a table. And it'll come with two bottles of premium. So you might be getting Ciroc. You might be getting a bottle of Buchanan, Goose, whatever your preference is. Two you know, bottles in the table. That's going to be at your table. And each extra bottle, it's like $100 to be short. And, but the thing is, you don't have to do the premium way. If you want a bottle of like Ron Medellin or they have a thing called Aguadente, they have local liquor or Smirnoff or whatever that it is, they sell cheaper bottles because in America, it's like, man, if you're not balling, you can't get no table, you can't get no bottles. Tough on you. When you get money, that's when you can get a bottle. Out here, they're like, yo, you want a bottle? We'll give you a bottle. Mm. You can spend thirty dollars and you can still get a bottle, you know, in the club, which I really love and I do that quite often. And a lot of times, I'm like, I don't even need a bottle. What do I need a bottle for? So you can go out literally with like twenty dollars or twenty-five dollars for the night and have a great time during the evening.
And like I said, I made a blog post uh, on Passport Heaven. You'll see the link in the description, basically for everything that you need. And one of the craziest things, we've been traveling around the world for the last seven years, and we have content from Europe, from Thailand, from Colombia, Panama, all over the world unreleased. We got about 100 videos to drop. So if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you hit that like button because um, I want to share this content with you because I believe, I truly believe through... I'm in the same boat. Uh, I've been traveling for over a decade and I have tons of footage. I miss, in my first year or two, I lost that footage because it was on my laptop, you know, back in those days. And my laptop dropped when I was at work. It dropped about three feet or so to the floor and it kind of killed the motherboard and I was never able to get that, all those first time to london and first time to japan like those special um memories i just lost it but i i remember it for myself so uh there's a lot of content i want to get out please subscribe to david on standby um my channel on youtube and my ig you know, we can educate the world on what places are really like today. The perception of Colombia is, you know, plastic surgery, cocaine, drugs, but there's so many beautiful things here. It's such a safe place, and I've learned so much here. I'm actually going to be buying a house here. That's how much I love it. I know that's possible for so many other places around the world that are misrepresented, like places in Asia, places in Africa, and I just want to show the world what the reality of the world is versus the negative media that most of the world shows. Anyway, I'm out of here. I hope you've enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have any more questions or on the blog. I'm out of here. Peace. What a wonderful, what a wonderful uh, video that is. Um, this is this is what I, this is why I wanted to create this channel, and not only do I want to talk on my experience, but I want to bring in. I actually want to interview some of these people from Passport Heavy, from Travel Noir, like different groups. Everybody has something. Well. The thing is, the travel sector is so flooded right now, but everybody has something to offer. It's just about, you know, just grabbing things from here and there that that will be able to work for you. And I just want to bring people on. I want to do Skype sessions to be able to, to talk to people. Not only do I want to learn, but while I'm learning, I want to share, you know, and I want people to learn from me as well. But... Besides learning, the sharing of information, it just makes it that much easier for everyone. And you never know, like, after people share information, they might still have connections in certain locations and they'll help give you a hookup. And this is the way us as travelers, we keep going. Like, you know, uh, I always think of currency or money as as a resource so all the different ways all the different techniques that we can use in order to whether it's save or what whatever it is, whatever you do to be able to travel more we got to utilize everything whether that means bartering um i've seen i've seen people in a lot of countries kind of work at the hostels for a couple of days like at the front desk or doing whatever in exchange for a place to stay and then they move on that was so crazy to me and next time i, I do want to ask more questions because it's been a while but people would actually let's say go to what's the last hostel i went to let's just say croatia for example people would go to Cro croatia work for three to four days um like work some hours chill out you know enjoy the country and keep it moving and that's exchange. That's a great business model. I never really thought about that. Besides, I don't know. Maybe they have some, one person to control the money, and then everybody else is like support, whether it's cleaning or whether it's um, taking in um, new customers. But that's a great business model that you constantly have a a flow of new employees that you don't have to pay and also they can share your your um, hostel with other people 
whether they post it online. Great business model. Whoever came up with that, that's amazing. And uh, so there's so many different ways that real travel. Tra- there's so many r- ways that real travelers use to be able to um, get out there and travel. But anyway, this is the introduction to David on standby. And in short, the reason why I named my platforms David on standby is to give a perspective on a um, an old, a former employee of an airline and kind of give that perspective. That perspective you don't really hear about, which is why when it came up in the beginning of the video where they went to Columbia and he was saying how from New York, sometimes there's $500 tickets, but I had to just throw in that I went to uh, Columbia for about 150 round trip in first class. So that's just to give you another uh, viewpoint on, you know, the benefits of being, working at an airline. So thank you for watching. Please, uh, please share. Like this is going to be a ton of videos coming out to you. So thanks for watching. David, I'll stand by.